real quick. Hold on. Oh, wait. Here comes Kubiak. I got to hurry. Oh, oh, there he is. Sorry, Mouse. Bob, bobberhat.com. Hey, Coach. What's up? PA, what's going on? Hey, uh, welcome uh, welcome to the what we call the Rube Party, which is like the word Rube. I mean, you're, you're from down Texas, Houston way. It's a southern word. Do you know what Rube like technically means? No, I'm going to pass on that one. You tell me. Yeah, it's like unsophisticated or something. But I mean, through the history of KFAN, we've had like a Rube relationship with our listeners. And they're fantastic. And there are millions of them. So this is a, a virtual Rube party. Uh, up top next to me is the producer of my show. He's Eric Nordquist. Next to you is a man we call the Twins Techie. He's Aaron Gleeman, writes for The Athletic. And, um, you know, it's where are you right now? You're, you're, uh, you're in Minnesota, correct? No, actually, I'm in Texas. I'm sitting in the car with my wife. We went out to dinner. And uh, so I'm trying to figure out how to use all this technology and talk to you guys. Oh, you're good, man. What uh, what'd you, what'd you have to eat? Oh, we had a little good Mexican food, you know, mm. down here Texas way. You know how that is. So would that be been? down there, down there, Gary? Would it be Papacitos? Uh, yeah, there are plenty of those, but no, we were at a little uh, local place here out by. Out, I live about uh, sixty miles north of Houston, and uh, so I got a little town out here called Plantersville. So we got our our uh, local restaurants that we hang out at. I'm uh, I'm going to ask you a non-football question. Get out of the way and let my boys do their thing. Um, Gary Kubiak, offensive coordinator, Minnesota Vikings, four-time Super Bowl champion. That's really cool. Uh, it'd be cool if it was five times this year with that uh, continuity on offense. But um, the Belmont, tis the law. Did you watch? You know what? I did not get a chance to see it. But uh, but I can honestly say I listened to you last night. What? Uh, have, How'd you do that? at home and scrolling through the channels, little TVG. Saw you call a couple races at Canterbury. You did a great job. Weird. Thank you, buddy. Hopefully you enjoyed the races. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Techie, you're our guest. Gary Kubiak, Aaron Gleeman, take it away. Well, I have a baseball question, believe it or not. <laughs> I read that you were a two-time All-State baseball player in Texas in high school. So my question is, obviously you went on to play many, many years in the NFL. It worked out, it worked out okay for you. But was there ever a point when you were like, maybe I'll give this baseball thing a try? Uh, no, I don't think so. I actually thought I was a good basketball player until all the recruiters came along and they said, uh, no, uh, you're a football player if you want to go to college here. So, uh, you know, I, I grew up in a day when you kind of played them all. You know, you guys know what I mean. Uh, you know, you played every sport and if you didn't have a baseball game that weekend, you ran track. So uh, really enjoyed it back in the day. But uh, I think things worked out OK for me. I'm, I'm, I'm in the right sport, I think. Hey, Gary, in 94, you got to coach Steve Young. What's Steve like? Well, he's an amazing person, and uh, I don't have to tell you guys that. Uh, just a very brilliant guy, uh, family guy. Uh, I was only with him one year, and it was it was incredible. I mean, the way he played for us that year, I think his QB, QB rating was somewhere around 112 or something. It was a, a you know amazing feat that year, but uh, Steve, Steve was the most accurate player ever coached. Um, you told him, you told him where you wanted him to go with the ball and he was going to go there. And, you know, he and Jerry, he and Jerry had a great, uh, rapport together. Uh, you know, when we played together, uh, you know, they, they just did such a great job week in and week out of getting things done. But, uh, Steve's a good, good man, good person, great for the NFL, uh, and a, and a great family man as well. Hey, Gary, you're, uh, your son, Clint, the quarterback's coach. As a college football player at Colorado State, do you remember the best play he made of his collegiate career? Because if you don't, I have a suggestion. Is that when he picked off Case? To, to How about that? University of Houston? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, he, yeah, he's got that picture. He's got that picture all over his house, and, <laughs> and he and Case are actually good friends, you know. So yeah. uh, they get to rib each other quite a bit. But uh, Case was a great player at the University of Houston, and thank got a couple of chances to play against him. So I know that's something he'll always cherish. Hey, hey uh, Gary, two things on that. If if he indeed does have a picture, hopefully it's the one back left of the end zone where his vertical was Michael Jordan like forty two. It was unbelievable. <laughs> And secondly, Coach, correct me if I'm wrong, 
but I believe before the interception, didn't he get a 15-yard penalty for whacking Case Keenum? Yeah, there's some story involved with that. I'm not sure that I know exactly what it is, Paul, but uh, you probably could check with him someday. I bet he could fill you in. Techie? So, as a semi-football fan, I'm a baseball guy mostly, but I know I know you have a rep, Gary, as like a, a running back guru. Like you turn great running backs, Terrell Davis, already obviously you had, but also lesser guys you've turned in. Do you feel like it's weird that an ex-quarterback who played like a decade plus in the NFL – is now like a guy who can turn running backs and is like offense based around running backs? Or is that how you sort of always viewed how an offense should be built? No, I, you know, I wouldn't say that. I, you know, a lot of people ask me that question about running the ball and, and I really kind of answer it the same way all the time. I, you know, I learned from Mike Chenhan. I grew up from Mike, uh, under Mike and Mike always told me, he said, you know, if you'll be good at something, if you're committed to it and, so, you know, growing up in Denver under Mike, we were committed to running the ball. We felt like we had to run the ball to be a good football team and to be a consistent team. So it just became became part of, like, my belief in how you're successful and, you know, what you stand for offensively. So I don't know. I, I think it's more of a commitment what we do. And, uh, you know, we got some real good ones there in Minnesota with Dalvin and Matt. And, you know, Boone came on and played really good last year and Amir. So, you know, we're going to start with running the ball and being physical for Zim. That's what he wants to be. And if we do that well, then we have a chance to make some big plays throwing the ball. So I think it's just more about a commitment than anything else. Hey, Gary, how does Dalvin look in comparison to your days with another phenomenal back, Arian Foster down in Houston? What do you like about Dalvin and, and just hearkening back to your days with Arian and some of the great plays he made? You know, all, all these great backs that I've been a part of, whether it's Arian or Terrell Davis, you know, uh, they, they've all been very bright football players. So that, that's the thing that stands out uh, with Dalvin with me. I've only been around him one year, but he's very smart. He understands offensive football, what you're trying to do scheme-wise, how you're trying to block things. So I think it, it starts with that. When, the, when those kids understand exactly where this hole should be or this scheme, how it should block out, uh, when they've got that type of an understanding, then their talents really take over. So I think you got to give Dalvin all the credit from that standpoint. He's a, he's a very bright young man and a bright player and can't wait to get, get back going with him. Hey, Gary, it's uh, it's fantastic that you've agreed to do this until 10, 15 in the evening. So we, um, you know, we have, we have many more questions that, uh, you know, I think we'll probably just start back with Houston. I don't, I don't have that much battle way out. I'll get some Texas A and M and seriously though, very serious question. Are you ready? I'm ready. Do you ever sit in an antique Corinthian leather chair with like a super cool dimly lit light and draw plays that are like great shallow crosses or new zone plays? <laughs> with like a feather ink pen? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say my chair is that nice at the office, Paul. You know, but uh, no, you know, it, it's interesting with this off season. It's been so crazy. You know, I, I think I probably could speak for many coaches. I think we're all kind of chomping at the bit to get a chance and go back and be with our players and do what we do. You know, and that's trying to scheme people and trying to give your players the chance to be successful. So, you know, it's been a crazy off season. Uh, Hopefully things can uh, get back to normal here and we can get going, get get to work and and uh, do what we, uh, you know, what we love doing. So I just can't wait to get back. And hopefully a couple of weeks from now, we'll be seeing you guys in person. Hey, uh, hey, hey Gary, just quickly, um, as a player or a coach, what is your most just like, boom, what comes to your head? Memorable game against the Minnesota Vikings. Well, it's easy for me. We were, we were playing the Vikings in the old, what's it, the Metrodome, right? Wasn't it called the Metrodome? Yeah. Uh, and we're playing them there, and, and we had like a 10-point lead, and Elway got hurt, came out of the game, and I came in, and I threw two picks, and y'all, uh, Joey Browner ran one back for a touchdown. <laughs> so I put a little gas on the fire, and y'all beat us that day. So my memory as a player against you guys was not very damn good. So I'm enjoying coaching. 
<laughs> I was just about to ask if you ever thought like what would happen if you got a starting gig. I know playing behind Elway it made it kind of impossible, but I guess that story you just told kind of says uh, maybe you didn't want one. <laughs> yeah, no, they. I, I'll never forget we ran a little little half roll and I threw an out route and and I got hit by Dolman. I was laying on the ground and I heard the crowd go crazy. You know, we we're playing on the road, so I said, "Hell, that can't be good." <laughs> So I uh, looked up and Joey Browner was running the other way. So it was not a good day. <laughs> hey, ultimately, Gary, what is it like when you're going to be up in the booth calling plays and such, but just having Clint in the mix with you, not only as a father-son relationship, but ultimately collaborators putting this offense together and winning games? Yeah, you know, it's exciting for me. I mean, as a coach and a dad, I mean, he's becoming a really good coach. Uh, did a really good job with Kirk last year. Uh, you know, this will be about the fourth or fifth year now that we've kind of worked together in some capacity. But I'll, I'll be pulling really hard from him and, and Rick and uh, Andrew Janoko. I've got some good young coaches on the staff. Uh, you know, we got we got to come together as a group and be as good as we can possibly be. But, uh, you know, it gets down to business, and, and he's doing a good job with those guys and pushing Kirk to be the best player he can be. So, like I said uh, before, I'm just looking forward to, to getting going again and, us all being together so so we can uh, you know get out there and push toward a great season i think um i you know i think uh, kevin's going to do a good job with uh, the cleveland browns too i think you know when, yeah. when i think about kevin in the first year as a head coach Devansky, you know then back to when you started as a head coach i mean you came into it with super bowl cred you know kevin comes into it with a nice even keeled personality like you you know, but he's just learned so much from so many from Bevel, you know, through you. It's, man, he's a, he's really well equipped to do well. You know, Paul, I mean, we could sit here and talk all night. I, I think the world of Kevin, uh, he's a great person. I got time. He's bright. Uh, and the thing about Kevin, Paul, I mean, in, in our business, you have to be able to motivate people. And and that's what he does a great job of. I mean, you look, you look at the job he did when Zim gave him a chance to be the coordinator. Uh, and he took a group of guys last year, me, me included, a group of new coaches together and, and put that offense together last year and did a great job. So I'm a big Kevin fan. He's a very good friend. We talk all the time. And, uh, you know, being a head coach in this league is a tough gig. But I tell you what, Kevin's ready to do it. And I think we're all rooting for him. Hey, we, uh, we got about a minute left with the offensive coordinator. Hagan just infiltrated my house and said, time for two more. So uh, let's make it a quick two. Techie, go. All right, here's my question. So we just talked about Stefanski. What for for fans looking forward to the season? Is there is there one thing you can point to that will be a noticeable difference in terms of the offense compared to last year? Oh yeah. You know that, that's hard. That's hard to answer. I mean, we all have our personalities and how we call plays, and you know when uh, when it hits the fans, so to speak. You know the way you start firing as a play caller. So. You know, I'm sure there'll be some difference, you know, uh, scheme wise. I think our beliefs are a lot alike. Uh, but I also look at Kirk and I say, OK, Kirk's ready to take more steps forward. Uh, you know, Dalvin's ready to take more steps forward, uh, Adam. So I think we can grow really fast here and hopefully we can catch up Justin uh, very quickly. So I'm, I'm just hoping we can take a big step off of the good things that happened last year. And I'm going to sit there and trust Kirk. It's time for him to. Uh, you know, take more upon his shoulders and take this team upon his shoulders. So it's my job to make sure he gets a chance to do that, guys. Hey, Gary, my last one for you is simply enough. When you're in that beautiful leather chair and the light gets dimmed down, feathering yes. pen, and you're drawing up the next great play, <laughs> tell me that it includes Irv Smith Jr. because I love Irv and I'm pumped for year two. Well, if it doesn't include, include Irv, I won't be doing many more interviews with you guys. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a hell of a player, guys. He, he did a great job last year, and you watch the progress throughout the course of the season. And he's a great young man. He really loves to play. He's had the benefit of being around Rudy every day, so I think that's helped him become a pro. But, you know, guys, we got a lot of weapons, and I just got to put them all in the right place and let them do what they do, and I'm looking forward to that. Hey, Gary, um, uh, last one we promised. Because I'm not allowed to walk around the hall – excuse me, because I haven't been over there to walk around the hallways, I haven't asked this question. It's a simple yes or a no, okay, and that's it. Can Ezra Cleveland play guard if he had to? Yeah, Paul, I, we think he he's a guy that's given us a lot of flexibility up front. You know, uh, 
uh, you know, when you look at our group right now, I mean, our starters played well last year. We lost Josh. Uh, we're trying to find a way to get, get better and get stronger. And the thing that Ezra can do is he's right in the middle of the mix from a competition standpoint. <clears throat> Let's not forget about Ole. Let's not forget about Drew Samia. Uh, Paul, those guys become, they take their biggest jump from year one to two as players. So we feel like we have a lot of flexibility up front. We're, we're still very young up front. So let's let them go compete and see where it all falls and uh, be the best that we can be. But we got a good group of guys. Everybody say goodbye to Vikings offensive coordinator Gary Kubiak. That's four Super Bowl wins from seven tries. Pasadena City College math indicates four wins, three L's. Gary, you are the very best. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay the drinking game. God bless you, and we'll talk soon. All right, guys. Hey, I enjoyed it. Take care. You have a good evening. Hey, bye. Cheers, Gary.